right. See, the good thing about having the microphone right here is it prevents me from moving around a whole lot. And uh, I've got, uh, I, br I had to bring my computer out because I have a terrible memory and I don't remember. Lost the batteries. All right. I don't remember the order I put my slides in, so without my computer, uh, you will be just as lost as me. Come on. All right, perfect. So, um, as Victor said, I'm uh, the director of the Atheist Candidates Project. Um, I'm sure a few folks in here have heard about it, probably listening to Cognitive Dissonance. And is Cecil still here, Cecil? Cecil's not here. Well, they were kind enough to have me on the show back in January of last year when we were giving it its initial launch, and I was excited about it. But there's a story that's got to go behind that. So I'm going to be telling you a story, and uh, that story uh, sadly includes a photo album. Um, it is not wrapped in a doily. We're not going to take too long. I promise we're going to get through the photo al album relatively quickly. But then we're going to get to uh, where the can Atheist Candidates Project is today and the trajectory for the future. So because American Atheists is a 501c3, um, I feel compelled to address just a couple of points before we move forward. The opinions and views expressed in this presentation are solely those of the speaker and do not necessarily represent the views, opinions, or policies of American Atheists Incorporated. And the content of this presentation uh, was not in any way reviewed or authorized by American Atheists Incorporated and does not constitute an endorsement expressed or implied of any candidate named herein. Perfect. <laughs> just in case, just in case. All right, <laughs> so let's get into the story of the Atheist Candidates Project. I'm going to be telling you about what we've been doing in Arizona, and it hasn't been just me. Um, I've been a small piece of it, but we've had folks like uh, Evan Clark and Sarah Blaine at Spectrum Experience. It's uh, America's only humanist PR firm, uh, you know, field organizers, volunteers all over the state, the Secular Coalition for Arizona, and the networks that have been formed by the non-believing groups, including the Humanist Society of Greater Phoenix, that have made this kind of stuff possible. So I, don't, I also don't want you to get the wrong idea that Arizona is a bastion for atheist success and that we are somehow a, this is, this is the, the last remaining um, stronghold for intellectualism in the United States, because it's not, we're not as crazy as the news might make us look, but we are pretty crazy. <laughs> this is Sylvia Allen. Uh, she's Exhibit A. Uh, she is uh, the chair of the S Senate Education Committee in Arizona, and she believes the Earth is 6,000 years old. She's also the legislator who proposed uh, mandatory church attendance for all citizens of the state of Arizona. <laughs> this is Exhibit B. This is Representative David Stringer. He said this to me, get this, right? He tells me, I don't know of any monuments to atheism beside Auschwitz. Oh. Well, eating the tacos that were paid for by the Secular Coalition for Arizona at our Secular Day event, he came out to meet one of his constituents and apparently thought it was important that they know that they are a Nazi. <laughs> so next in our list is Dr. Kelly Ward. She believes chemtrails are a thing that we should all be really thoroughly concerned about. This is Congressman Paul Gosar. This man called a Holocaust survivor a Nazi collaborator. It gets, it gets better. Uh, here's one, this, this fellow's one of my favorites. This is Mayor Jeff Surdy. So um, he doesn't think climate change is a, you know, a threat to the six million people living in our desert. Doesn't really want to do anything about the fact that we don't have our own supply of water. But, uh, this man took to uh, social media to make fun of my genitals and call me a beta male. Um, uh, and he's a mayor. Uh, so we've got our kooks. Uh, Representative Kelly Townsend's another. Um, so this, this one should be pretty obvious. Representative Mark Fincham, another one of my favorites. Um, believes the Constitution was inspired by the Ten Commandments. You know. We got uh, Senator Debbie Lesko. She's behind the massive expansion of vouchers, which we know are being used to fund parochial schools in our state. Uh, Representative Bob Thorpe introduced legislation to stop public schools and universities from teaching any content that promotes, quote, social justice toward a race, gender, religion, political affiliation, social class, or other class of people. And then there's this dude. This is Sheriff, former Sheriff Joe Arpaio, uh, convicted criminal Sheriff Joe Arpaio. 
who, if elected, wants to re... Uh, pardon me? Oh, you didn't get it? Sorry. All right. The war two pieces of technology here. He uh, wants to reopen birtherism because apparently President Obama's long-form birth certificate wasn't proof enough that he wasn't born in Kenya. So this is the reason we need atheists running for public office, uh, especially in a state like Arizona. Arizona is not the ideal climate for electing atheists, but we've been successful. We need atheists running for public office because we need elected officials who govern based on facts and not nonsense. We need elected officials who understand the value of science in policymaking. We need elected officials who believe reason is more important than convictions. And we need elected officials who are willing to put good before God's. So now we get to the story. Since 2012, uh, and the groundwork for this was laid much earlier, we had atheist groups form in Arizona, the Humanist Society is a bit older um, than this. And uh, since 2012 though, uh, this is when we've, we've had a, a intentional effort to bring atheists into elected office. Uh, we started with five candidates, two running for school boards, one running for a state legislative seat, two running for Congress. Three of those five won their races. In 2014, we ran three for school boards, three for state legislative seats, three for Congress. Four of those nine won their races. And in 2016, this is where we really stepped it the hell up. Three school board races, five state legislative races, one healthcare district, one uh, person running for county board of supervisors, two city council seats, one state treasurer, three for Congress. Seven out of the 13 won their races. That's more than half. <laughs> now, I like charts and numbers. I'm a political scientist, so if, if like, you want to talk you know, math and voter behavior, we can do that later. Um, also, I should address, since I brought up that Cambridge Analytica question, the tangentially related, ask me about that after, and there's a talk about that I can direct you to on YouTube. Uh, but I'm, I'm a big fan of charts, so let's visualize what's been happening in Arizona. From 2012 to 2018, we went from five atheists running for public office to 23. That's how many are running in Arizona today. We have four school board candidates, eight state legislature candidates, four city council candidates, one for justice of the peace, one for utility commissioner, one for state superintendent, two for Congress, one for Senate, and one for governor. and this man is one of my favorites. This is James Woods. He didn't run in 2012, he ran in 2014, but I consider him to be a major transition in what we were doing in Arizona and where, where we found what really works for running atheists for public office. James uh, spoke at um, an American Atheist Conference, I think back in 2014. Um, someone can correct me on that later. But uh, back in 2014, and he has an, uh, an incredible story. So James um, worked in IT, and he was at a new job where he had a probationary period and his health insurance hadn't kicked in yet. He had about eight days before his health insurance was gonna kick in when he was diagnosed with um, a MRSA infection. Um, he lost um, the functioning of his kidneys. Um, his pancreas failed. Um, he had uh, significant chunks of his, his legs and feet and shoulder removed. And the, re the reason for this was he received inadequate care because he did not have medical insurance. So if this isn't a political issue, I don't know what is, but most of us in this room, like we, we like to think we have a pretty high stresshold, uh, stresshold, threshold for stress, a stresshold. <laughs> um, and we like to think we can weather these sorts of storms. And I, I, I have a feeling that what I would do in this scenario is um, you know, hide in my home afterwards and allow myself to kind of recover from the emotional strain of, of such an experience, especially since what resulted in him getting the care he needed was when he officially became disabled after he lost his sight as a result of the infection. So he 
didn't do that. He didn't go hide. He decided that he needed to do something about it. And he signed his paperwork to run for Congress in a hospital bed, which is, that takes an amazing level of guts and determination. So he ran for Congress, and on top of that, in Arizona's fifth congressional district, which is the most conservative congressional district in the country, and you know, let's quantify that a little bit. So we, when we actually look at the numbers uh, for voter behavior in that district, uh, this district is four points more conservative than the state of Alabama. And he ran, um, having signed his paperwork in a hospital bed. So working with uh, Spectrum Experience, um, I, you know, keeping the, trying to keep the fundraising money in the family with you know, humanists and atheists, they came up with a, a really creative um, campaign and communication strategy because this is, it's going to be run on a shoestring budget when you're in a district that is that far away from favorable. Um, they ran a very creative media campaign and they put his atheism up front but not in the center. He was an atheist. He was open about it. He said it in interviews. He was very public about being an atheist. And everyone wanted to talk about his atheism. And that was a way for him to get his foot in the door for these interviews, to get him in front of people. But what did he talk about during the interviews mostly? He talked about things like poverty. He talked about uh, health care. Um, he talked about um, foreign policy. I had the privilege of being invited on to help them construct a humanist response to ISIS. Um, and this is actually one of my favorite things that he did. <laughs> I gotta tell you a little bit about this because, um, man, was this a fun ride. Um, so, there are the typical way you get an endorsement. Has anyone here worked on a campaign before? Anyone? We got, well, yeah, Gail, you don't care. You were the candidate. Um, so, we got a few people who've worked on campaigns. Um, they, you were sent questionnaires to obtain endorsements. And some of the pro life organizations have taken a bit of a different direction. They don't send you a questionnaire, they send you a list of demands. Um, it's all of their policy positions with a signature line on the bottom. You know, you're, not, you're nodding, you got one of those. So it's a coercion letter where they uh, suggest in the letter that if you don't sign, uh, they might not hold back on supporting your opponent or attacking you during the election, right? Um, so they get these letters and, and James is a, a staunch feminist and a absolute defender of a woman's absolute bodily autonomy. Yes, we should clap for that. Um, so they said, we have to respond to this. So rather than signing, the, well, they were going to sign the letter, but rather than ignoring it, which is what most you know, politicos would advise doing, just ignore it, uh, maybe they'll forget about you. Uh, they sent these to them <laughs> with a letter saying, we actually agree with you. We want to reduce the number of abortions in the United States too. But we want to do that by providing comprehensive and science-based sex education, by making contraception accessible and inexpensive. Um, and they lost their collective shit. <laughs> um, so this resulted in the feminist blogosphere blowing up. They got coverage on CNN for it. That's a pretty good reach for $15 worth of condoms. <laughs> and that is how you run effective messaging strategies as an atheist, especially in districts where you don't have a whole lot of favorability in, in as far as the numbers of uh, uh, concerning voter behavior go. So I'm gonna show you one more thing about James Woods before I move on, on to the other past candidates and continue the story here. Um, this is the kind of messaging that we used on issues with this candidate. And you're gonna notice one thing that is, is missing from this that you might expect to be there or have seen with other atheist candidates in the past. Oh, do we have sound? We do, okay. Oh, wrong way. All right, let's try that again. I swear I've done this before. All right. There's an ongoing argument in this country that really frustrates me. It's about guns and how available they should be. But I don't think most people realize how available they currently are. Recently, I went to a gun show with my father. In less than an hour, I was able to walk out with a fully functional 38 revolver. No ID required, no background check, no questions asked. And it only cost 100 bucks. We need to stop arguing about things we all agree on. 
Americans overwhelmingly support background checks, and they are proven to work. If we're going to be responsible with our freedom, we need to stop the argument and require background checks. That was done with a cheap Canon DSLR um, and a few hours of workshopping the idea, um, and that also got national media attention. Now, I don't want to start a gun control debate in here. Um, I'm sure that there's, there's folks who are in this room who are more conservative about that view. Um, I'm trying to get across here uh, how you can run on issues as an atheist. Atheism isn't a thing that we believe in. Um, it describes what we don't believe in. Issues are what matter to us. So be an atheist, but stand up for issues that matter to voters. So let's move on here. Come on. Did they break it? Come on. There we go. All right, so I want to give you a little bit of information when we're talking about issues on some of the candidates who've run in the past. So on, um, oh, what direction is that for you? Uh, on the right, I suppose, uh, we have uh, Beth Weiser. She uh, was a rural candidate, ran in one of it, huh? Oh, is she on the left? Oh, she's on the left. Okay, got it. I, I can't brain. Um, all right, so Beth Weiser's on the left, um, both uh, politically and like, physically there. Um, she, is, she was a candidate in CD5, or, sorry, LD5, uh, which is a very, very rural district. If you know Arizona geography, it extends all the way from just south of Las Vegas down to Yuma. Um, so there's pretty much only desert there and, and deep, deep poverty. Uh, she ran on a campaign of... Uh, drug reform um, and addressing rural poverty and education funding. She was an open atheist. Kara Pryor in the middle. Uh, she went after obscenity laws in Arizona uh, and the, the incredibly high animal euthanasia rates we have in our state. Um, I, uh, was able, I had the privilege of being able to write a piece of legislation for her that she ended up nicknaming the Puppy Love Bill. Didn't have a damn thing to do about atheism. Um, but it's something that resonated with people on an issue that actually matters. Joe Downs, um, not quite as m many issues to go with his campaign. He was running for state treasurer, which you know, is a bookkeeper. So, but open atheist. He was an open atheist. Here we have um, same direction. Uh, Joe Vichica. Uh, he ran for the Prescott City Council. Prescott is not. It's a beautiful place, but it's not friendly to you know leftists, to atheists, to um, gay people. Um, and he was all of those things. Um, now, in his case, at the time, he was not open about it. Um, because being a Democrat in Prescott uh, is enough to keep your signs from going up on friendly businesses because those business owners are afraid of reprisals for supporting a Democrat. Um, he was outed as a gay man on a radio show um, in Prescott. And he didn't back out of the race. He kept up the fight uh, because visibility matters. The man in the middle uh, is Justin Stewart, um, a local punk rocker in Tempe who, uh, and DJ who ran for city council, wonderful fellow. Uh, and then we have Matthew Serra um, on the other side of the screen who ran for county board of supervisors. Anyone recognize that fellow? <laughs> so when you get it, you know Aaron's issues, um, but uh, no offense, Aaron. Um, <laughs> If you get a chance to talk to him, you've got to ask him about the guy he was running against. Because this, this, this fellow, huh? Is it, where is he? Is he back here? Uh, someone was laughing. That's okay. Um, the fellow he was running against called his Republican primary, or accused his Republican primary opponent of being in cahoots with the devil. Um, so yeah, I would love to know what this guy thought of Aaron. Um <laughs> Shawnee Rios in the middle uh, had a shot at winning a city council seat in Knoxville, Tennessee. And then we have Gail. Gail, stand up for us if you could. Gail Jordan ran for Senate in Tennessee. And Gail, a lot like James Woods, is an example of how atheists can run on issues that matter to people, issues that affect human beings in this country. It wasn't about atheism. The press wanted to make it about athe atheism, but you stuck to the issues. And that's what made an impact, and that's what's helping to normalize our role in politics. All right, 
So I, he took his campaign pictures down from Facebook, so the only thing I could find was a picture of him cosplaying as Columbo. Um, <laughs> That is Saman Golistan. He is a uh, Persian American who uh, ran for a healthcare district seat. Um, then we have Scott Pryor. He was the uh, first candidate to uh, receive an endorsement from the Satanic Temple, uh, which is kind of amazing. Um, not Church of Satan, I know, Jack. I'm, I'm, <laughs> all right. And this person gets a slide of his own. Um, this is Michael Weiser. Uh, and it took us about five hours to workshop this look. Um, and the folks at Spectrum were the brains behind this, so if you want a good PR team, go hire them, not me. But he, uh, he's the state director of Normal. Uh, he was open about his atheism, but this man has a depth of knowledge about rural poverty greater than, than that of anyone I know. And he brought rural poverty to the forefront of Arizona's political discussion. Um, I also just happen to love this photo. I wish it were a magazine cover because I, I like the combination of the money tie over that green background while he's smoking a literal joint in the, the photo studio. Uh, just a wonderful fellow. He ran against Paul Gosar, by the way. And now let's move on to our elected officials. We have Kirsten Cinema. Um, before anyone boos, I know <laughs> some people don't like Kirsten, but she's an atheist and she goes in here and you know, she is an elected official in spite of being an openly bi woman who is also a non-believer. She got elected in Arizona. Patrick Morales ran for the Tempe City Council. He's currently on uh, the Tempe Elementary School Board. He is an atheist um, and a Hispanic atheist at that. He's one of my people and I'm proud that he's serving as one of our elected officials. Uh, Ryan Winkle uh, was elected to the Mesa City Council. He was an open atheist and the city council races are nonpartisan. He won by knocking on 14,000 doors personally uh, and talking to people about the issues that mattered to them. His atheism no one cared. Athena Salman, who's familiar with Athena? Athena is a celebrity. Uh, she's a little bit of a celebrity. Um, she is the exemplar of, of the American melting pot. Um, she has uh, members of her family who are Mexican. She has Italian, Palestinian heritage. Um, she is an atheist woman, strong feminist, uh, who's elected to the Arizona State Legislature. Uh, she's the one who was called out of order when uh, the um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, when uh, one of our le legislators uh, decided that um, humanity does not constitute a higher power uh, when she was uh, giving an invocation. So Juan Mendez, uh, he actually was subjected to a prayer in repentance for his invocation. <laughs> um, but he was also elected in uh, Legislative District 26. And I'm gonna pause there because the two of them are both from the same legislative district. Not only have we made it possible for atheists to win in Arizona, but we have shifted the playing field in some districts to where a Catholic who was running against them in the primary began publicly identifying himself as a Christian humanist. <laughs> Not aligning with our values became a liability in Tempe. Then we have Katie Pate. She's serving as the president of the Osborne School Board in Phoenix. Uh, and here's our current candidates. J.P. Martin is a member of the Secular Coalition for Arizona. He's running for a state legislative seat in Tucson. Scott Menor is a philosopher and non-believer who's running for Congress in CD5 against uh, Andy Biggs. Uh, the fellow on the right is Noah Dyer. Um, if you might recognize him from The Daily Show. Um, uh, no, it wasn't good. Um, but he, he is an atheist, so he's on the slide. Um, he's running for governor. Uh, Arizona. Yeah, these are all Arizona. Last slide is a couple folks from Texas, and there's folks who I can't put in because they're not open about their atheism yet, uh, and we'll get to that a, a little bit later. So the person, uh, same direction here, we have Brianna Westbrook, an, open, uh, an openly trans woman who is an atheist and a democratic socialist who ran in a, a district that went to Donald Trump by 20 points. She ran for Congress. She lost her primary, but she didn't back out. She's now supporting the, the winner in the primary, and she is running for a state legislative seat, uh, one that I think she's got a shot at winning. Uh, we have Alessia Sears, who is uh, not only one of our tribe, but she is the youngest candidate running for any elected office in Arizona. Jen Duff, running for the Mesa City Council. Uh, Joan Green uh, is running for Congress in CD5. So there's two atheists running in the same primary for Congress in con the most conservative congressional district in the country. That's fantastic. <laughs> Kathy Hoffman in the middle here is a speech and language pathologist who works at a Title I school. 
She's running for state superintendent of public instruction. And then we have uh, Dr. Kathy Moore Almeida, who is a psychotherapist. She works mainly with children and families going through child protective services. Uh, she's running uh, to fix child protective services and get the kids out of the CPS offices who are living in the offices. Um, and uh, to address environmental sustainability, environmental quality, and, and protection of our water resources in our, our desert. And we got a few, uh, oh, got a couple more here. So Rebecca McHood uh, is a staunch uh, advocate for uh, education funding. Uh, she was part of the group that was uh, collecting the 300 plus thousand signatures that we needed to undo the damage done by our state legislature with the massive voucher expansion that would have killed public education in our state. And we got an injunction on that, by the way, until the uh, ballot initiative is voted on. <laughs> and then the last picture of Arizona candidates is Talia Fuentes. She's a rising star in Arizona. She is a biologist, a single mother, um, you f formerly a member of a punk rock band. Uh, she is an open atheist who is running for Congress in Arizona for a seat that was already won by a non-believer. We've got a few Texans here. Um, Al Woolham is running for Congress in Texas. Uh, Danielle Pellet um, is an open, oh, that's, sorry, there we go, two buttons here, uh, is an openly trans woman uh, who is running for Congress in Texas. And then Roy Carl Stanley actually recently had dropped out of the race, but he was also running for Congress in Texas. In Texas, there are 10 atheists running for public office. <laughs> now, some of you may have noticed that there's, um, uh, when you're looking through the pictures here, we're seeing a lot of diversity in this. And I decided to break down those numbers, at least with Arizona. And I think representation matters. This is important, uh, which is why I made this slide. Half of the atheists running in Arizona are women. Half of them. More than a third are millennials, um, or nearly half are millennials. More than a third are LGBTQ. And a third are people of color. The slate of atheists running for public office in Arizona is more diverse than the Democratic Party's candidates in Arizona. And that's something that we can be proud of. All right, so again, I like charts. This is not scientific. It's a very small sample. So uh, the pretend margin of error isn't a thing and don't use this for real world applications. Um, but if, assuming that uh, we continue to do exactly what we've been doing in Arizona and change nothing, um, from 2012 to 2028, we will have gone from five atheist candidates running to 50. Our state Senate uh, is, gotcha, our state Senate is uh, 30 people. So to give you an idea, 31. Um, all right. So why am I telling you this? Atheists are running for public office. Atheists are growing in diversity. Atheists are far better supported than we anticipated, and atheists win elections. Now that gets us to the Atheist Candidates Project. Our mission, I gotta blow through here pretty quick. Our mission is to eliminate barriers to entry that atheists often face when seeking public office. This mission can be broken down into three components, training atheists interested in running for public office, building support infrastructure around candidates, and developing and supporting a robust network of professionals and volunteers. We're gonna do this by crowdsourcing. The internet is a wonderful thing. So this helps us build out a database of volunteers and professionals looking to work with atheist candidates and connect candidates with you know, elected officials, former candidates who are willing to provide mentor mentorship and guidance uh, and also build local infrastructure to train and support candidates. Why are we doing this? 20% of us are non-believers in this country. 20% have no religious affiliation. This makes us one of the largest minority groups in the country and one of the most severely underrepresented if the law is going to apply to all of us, we must share in the responsibility of creating it. So version 1.0 um, emphasized uh, networking, indirect volunteer recruitment, professional recruitment, didn't provide organizational support or training, asked that professionals donate their time where they could, and assumed that demand for atheist candidates would need to be developed over several election cycles, as was the case in Arizona. Are you speaking the Oh, there we go. Yes, and we're willing to admit that because we're atheists. Um, <laughs> so, 
Here's some of the lessons that we got from version 1.0. The project was overwhelmed quickly. Within three months, the project received over 152 requests for support and participation. Part-time work was insufficient to keep up with the, the demand. There were insufficient resources to focus on fundraising and support. Uh, at the same time, there was too much work to depend on volunteer labor and professionals needed to prioritize paying clients over pro bono work. Um, because I, I assume all of us eat food. Um, so here's how the project has to change. Networking works in the early stages of a movement. It's become clear that our political movement is mature, but it needs resources. The Atheist Candidates Project must rise to meet it. Building a sustainable, elections-focused movement requires paying our professionals. The project must enable candidates to fundraise and pay for services from atheists and allied professionals. Meeting the demand for atheist officials requires full-time commitments. The project must hire capable full-time communications, organizing, and training staff to provide support that our candidates need. Uh, where were we here? So version one point whatever. Um, development of the volunteer network continues. Onboarding of new professionals continues. Recruitment of new candidates for 2020 continues, and we're going to be doing a shit ton of fundraising. Um, <laughs> It's, it, people are expensive. Um, like we we got to pay people well. So, Version 2.0, aiming for November of 2018, when we reach our initial fundraising goal of $90,000, the project will be hiring a full-time development director to speed up the fundraising process. Uh, we'll be launching candidate support packages, giving candidates access to subscriptions to provide them with supp uh, support from professionals at a rate of $30 per hour. Um, and that's everywhere from you know, graphic designers up to a lawyer. Uh, $30 per hour um, to talk to someone who's managed campaigns. If you're a school board candidate who's only got $6,000 to work with, that's a damn good deal. Um, and it makes sure that you have access to professional support. A web-based portal for candidates to access the volunteer network, guides on free resources for candidates, and a step-by-step -step instruction for how they can file to run for office. In February, we'd like to hire a national training director and communications director and hopefully we'll be opening our first project office in a target city. May of 2019 is when we want to finish the development of web-based training and education materials specifically designed to prepare atheists for running successful political campaigns. Uh, we want to finish the development of training materials uh, for groups seeking to support atheist candidates and finish development of a comprehensive and unified atheist candidates communication strategy including development of comprehensive issue framing and earned media guides. And this is when we want to launch the Atheists for America hashtag campaign, where we get folks who are willing to support candidates, professionals, volunteers, talking about why it's important for us to have our own elected officials. Where am I down to? Okay. Um, you'll have to ask me questions afterwards. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, in August of 2019, we want to hire our regional training staff. Uh, this is when we plan to deploy the Atheist Candidate Training Investment and Organization, uh, rather Organizing Network, or ACTION, to begin scheduling and training local groups to recruit candidates, manage campaigns, and support grassroots election activities. And some of you may be leaders on those groups, so let's talk afterwards. Uh, December of 2019 is when we want to hire a national organizing director. Um, identification of nationwide target districts and development of a national and local targeted organizational strategy um, is uh, also in, on the schedule for December. Uh, this will include, but it's not limited to, identification of uh, viable methods for micro-targeted marketing, uh, early identification of key early voting, high efficacy and persuadable target populations, and early assessment of uh, organizational requirements for candidates. February of 2020 is when we want to hire our regional organizing directors uh, and open regional field offices, and as well as recruit interns and organizing fellows to work in those offices. By March, uh, we begin in-candidate, uh, in-person candidate training, candidate person training, that's new, um, with direct recruitment and organizational support. Uh, training will include information on the nuts and bolts of running a campaign, basics on political communication, how to obtain endorsements, network development, voter outreach, etc. And at this point, we begin deploying our regional organizational and communication strategies. This is when we launch the Atheist Candidates hashtag and video campaign to try to see if we can't push our Atheist Candidates viral, but not on their atheism. This is just how we get people in the door, on the issues that actually matter to voters. And then we win all the things. So, so that's, that's the goal, right? I am rapidly running out of time here. So I'm going to get on to what's next as quickly as I can.
No, seriously. Like, take out your phones. You've all got phones. Let's uh, hold them up. Let's see your phones. Got it. All right, everyone's got their smartphones. Okay, these, these magical pieces of metal and glass are a conduit by which we can communicate with you. Text atheist to 24587. I promise I'm not going to spam you. Um, but you will get messages based on your area code about candidates running in your area. You're going to get updates on the campaign, and we might ask you for money. But you know, that you, the important part is how you can help atheists in your area. Everyone done? No? All right. I'm going to keep going. Um, okay. Do you host a podcast? Huh? You do. You do. Everyone here is a podcaster. You have a platform that we need. Um, so consider hosting me or one of our candidates on your show. This is how we're going to get the message out to the people who are most sympathetic to us. And who knows, maybe CNN is listening and they'll, they'll, they'll host us. Register to volunteer, join us as a professional, run for office at atheistcandidates.com. There is a new website in the works. Um, someone else was working on it and it broke. Um, but uh, there's a new website in the works. It is up, so the one that's up there is functioning. Um, but it's not as pretty as I would like. So if you jump back on there in a few months and you see something that's completely new and shiny, that's still the same organization. Um, all right. Register to volunteer. Oh, I just said that. All right, let's try that again. Also, <laughs> uh, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. You can make a one-time donation or become a sustaining supporter at atheistcandidates.com. I'm also carrying a square reader if you want to give me your money now. But, like, I'm not going to push that real hard here. What I'm going to push is get online, register with the organization, um, say you want to volunteer, offer your professional services, and we can negotiate um, v very unfair rates to you initially. But it gives, it gives you an opportunity to be able to actually connect with candidates who need services, and then at that point you can provide them what they need and actually talk to them about developing that relationship further. You and only you can help us build a more secular society by supporting our fight for fair representation. All of us has to be engaged in this. So I'm, I'm committed to making this work, and based on what we've done in Arizona, I'm confident that Arizona's not an anomaly. Atheists run for office, and they win. And I'm looking forward to taking this nationwide with all of your help. Yeah. I have time for, I think, half a question? No? No? All right, we're good. Thank you so much for your time. You didn't mention anything about parties. I didn't. No, I was hoping you would address that, um, either because they probably need to participate in an established party. Yeah. I'm trying to uh, avoid um, getting the uh, legal counsel's blood up here. Um, so, um, I, the, again, not endorsements of anything. We know that there's one party in this, co uh, in this country that is hostile to us, um, period. That's, that's the reality, a reality of it. And there are conservatives in this room who cannot bring themselves to vote uh, for the conservative party uh, because that party doesn't believe that we should have equal rights under the law. So uh, what I can say is that the, the Democratic Party is uh, generally more welcoming to us, and that's going to vary from state to state. Um, but if you are planning on running for office, that's where you're going to find the best party support, and we need the support of the political parties. Um, that's just the reality of it. Um, so see if you can find a secular caucus in your state with your Democratic Party, and if they don't have one, maybe start one. So if they're, if they're not going to be welcoming to us, then um, we're going to fight our way in and camp out in their office. So <laughs> that's just how that's going to work. Start a secular caucus. Become a, become a precinct committee person. All right, so now I'm out of time. Okay, cool beans. <laughs>